The organism of a living being, either plant or animal, works thanks to a multitude of chemical reactions. <laughs> These chemical reactions ensure different functions necessary to the organism to stay alive, such as the exchange of information between cells, the transport of substances within the organism, or even muscular <laughs> contraction. The chemical reactions change molecules into other molecules, but most reactions ensuring vital functions need energy in order to happen. Where do they find this energy? Fortunately, on the other hand, some chemical reactions produce energy. The method consisting in using a chemical reaction to produce energy, which will allow to trigger off another reaction that needs energy, is widespread. For instance, during a barbecue party, the charcoal combustion reactions produce energy in the form of heat, which is then used to trigger off the cooking reaction of the meat. Within the organism, the chemical reaction that provides energy is essentially the transformation of adenosine triphosphate, abbreviated ATP, into adenosine diphosphate, ADP. But of course, in order for this reaction to happen, ATP had to be permanently produced as it is consumed. The production of ATP is the role of breathing. And as always within living beings, we are back to a chemical reaction. The transformation of ADP into ATP. This complex reaction needs other elements in order to occur. Glucose, phosphorus and oxygen. There is oxygen in the air or in water, so the organism just has to draw it from there. Either through organs as lungs or gills for animals, or directly through cells' membranes for plants, such as leaves. Products resulting from the reaction are ATP, but also water and CO2, which is released in the atmosphere or in water. Thus, the breathing of living organisms transforms the oxygen of the air into CO2. In order for the breathing to lead to the production of ATP, we have seen that glucose and phosphate are also necessary. Where are they coming from? from food, of course, and here things are really different for animals and for plants because animals can directly swallow complex organic products such as carbohydrates, lipids or vitamins, which are then transformed in nutrients that can be used by cells such as glucose. Plants have not the possibility to do that. The main source corresponds to what roots can absorb, therefore what is to be found in the ground water and mineral salts. Mineral salts especially provide phosphorus, which can be transformed into phosphate. But where can they find the carbon, which constitute a basic atom for all organic matter, particularly glucose, which we are currently focusing on? Well, plants take this carbon in the air with the help of light. It is the photosynthesis. It is another chemical reaction that uses water pumped by the roots and the CO2 captured by the leaves and changes it into glucose used by the organism and in oxygen rejected in the atmosphere. This chemical reaction needs energy to come about and this energy is drawn from the light captured by the leaves. This is why a plant produces oxygen only in daytime when there is enough light and only when it has leaves. In nighttime, plants only breathe and therefore only consume oxygen, as well as in winter when leaves have fallen. Globally, does a plant produce more oxygen than it consumes? Yes, because from the moment when a plant grows, its mass, essentially made up of carbon, increases. However, carbon can only be obtained when producing oxygen through photosynthesis. Each carbon atom stored up in the plant has required the release of an oxygen molecule. So growing plants provide the needed oxygen for animals. <laughs>